uh, when I was a kid, uh, I observed that teachers, parents, or any adults will label someone, some some kid or some of my classmates as stupid or smart. And growing up, I used to believe that certain f- people, certain people are just gifted, and certain people are not. And it kind of uh, made me feel like, wow, the world is unfair for for just giving the intelligence to certain people and then for some they're just doomed right in this video you are going to debunk this belief and let's dive in hi jonah primal thinker here and i want to have a little disclaimer here that i'm not a doctor of any sorts i'm just a girl in the internet trying to connect with us sharing my own experiences with you and if you're okay with that, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so I can share my unique up moments with you. So that's the assumption, and we will break this down to its fundamental principles. Okay, again, the assumption is you're either smart or stupid, period, and you cannot do anything about it. And then, actually, this is what the scientific community has believed for a long period of time. But now we can directly ask, is the brain really fixed? And things change. What we believe now is that the brain is actually plastic based on the recent studies and data that we have. And this uh, phenomenon is called neuroplasticity. So let's say you have a small brain, if you will. You now have the chance to grow your brain literally because of neuroplasticity. And this is a very important key principle here as we discuss this um, all throughout this video. And the key here is, since we know that our brains are plastic, it's malleable, it's changeable, we can form it into any how we like. The question is, okay, my brain is changeable, how can I change it? First, we need to understand neuroplasticity. So this is how it works. We have an input or uh, an information that we send to the brain. This is through our senses like our vision, hearing, tastes. Uh, skin, smell, things like that. That's what our senses are for, to give information to our brain. Yeah, so we feed information to our brain. And once we have that info, we now respond to this information, right? So for example, um, we learn that we should not put our hands on the hot stove, right? The input there is the hotness of the stove and it will burn our fingers. So the output is to to, um, immediately remove your fingers from the stove. And for every every task, for every thinking, every belief, or anything that you do for each one of those, we have specific neural pathways. You've uh, learned about neurons from my other video, right? Um, So for example, we have a specific neural pathway for reading. And then we have a specific pathway for beliefs like I'm not smart. That's actually a belief. That's not that, that's not a fact. That's a belief. So probably your parents told you you're not smart, you're stupid. And believe it or not, it has its own neural pathway in your brain. And that's for the beliefs. The another one is, uh, for example, in activities like cycling, you have a specific neural pathway for that. The idea is um, for every task or thinking or belief that you have, you have a specific road to travel. For that specific task and yes we we feed our brains with different things thinking beliefs activities problems books clothes yes even those everything basically now i want to uh, ask you what do you think will make the brain say now nah, i don't really need to change and look it starts with an s and i promise you it's a bad word well yeah it's not a bad word okay um, the answer is, it's a four letter, same. Imagine this, you are eating the same food every day. You are watching the same videos every day. You are brushing your teeth the same way every day. You have the same problems every day. You respond to the same problems the same way every day. So what, what makes you think that that will change your brain, right? Because the neural pathways are already set. For that problem, you have a neural pathway already. For that kind of thinking or belief that you are stupid or that you're not capable of change, that neural pathway is already there. So 
how can your brain change if you believe the same things over and over again, right? If that makes sense to you. And then now, if you really want to change, the keyword here is introducing new experiences to your brain and new responses to existing inputs that you are feeding your brain. For example, uh, for example, you respond to like you or you respond to COVID just like everyone else, like um, being depressed and panicky, like you're um, helpless. But instead of that, you can respond by creating a new hobby, right? It's actually your choice how you respond to things that you put to your brain. Or even better, you put new things to your brain and you will create a new neural pathway. And as I said, this will force your brain to make new neural pathways. This is when I totally agree with Barney here, that new is always better. Because let's remove the context of uh, new bad experiences versus new good experiences. The brain um, doesn't care as long as it's new. If you introduce new inputs to your brain, then you will have new neural pathways. Right? New is always better. So let's say here you already have neural pathways for these three different activities. And you can create a new one. Let's say you are starting out a new hobby in photography. And um, during the first few weeks or days, you're not that good in photography, right? Because you're still starting out. But if you keep on repeating on this, you keep improving on it, the neural pathway for that uh, photography task becomes stronger and stronger. And this is how the brain works. If it senses that you're always traveling that route, that neural pathway, it will allocate more resources to that pathway. And as opposed to if you are not really using this neural pathway for a long time, let's say for me, um, during college, I was always playing the guitar, but now I barely play the guitar now. So um, if I pick up the guitar again, it will take me some time before I uh, you know, get the groove. But, and you know, that's, that's how it works. So once you are persistent, on a certain task or activity, that is when um, things might go automatically and you don't even have to think about it. This explains the uh, geniuses like, or prodigies like um, um, Michael Jordan. He was not really gifted in basketball, but he was persistent in his craft. And so he is the success he is today. And same with Mozart. Um, he kept playing and creating music since he was a child, but people are overlooking um, overlooking the hard work of these people and just looking at the success. So the idea here is if you want to be successful at a certain craft or anything you want, just be persistent about it and improve on it every single day. And I promise you, you will have uh, your brain's advantage in it. It will become automatic and the rest will be history. Okay, so that's the new neural pathway. And another um, concept of neuroplasticity is that you can change existing neural pathways. For example, the belief that you are not smart. If you don't want to believe that, you are free to change that into, I'm smart. I don't believe any one of you, I am smart. And um, personally, my opinion is choose beliefs that will help you because the belief that you are not smart is not helping you in any way. So if you have the choice, choose the beliefs that um, make you feel like a better human being and your potential will be uh, awakened, if you will. Okay. And then, so that's neuroplasticity, right? But this video, I promised you how to literally grow your brain, not how to change your brain, right? So the real meat and potatoes here is how about growing your brain cells? Is it possible? Well, the premise that your brain is changeable is required before um, before jumping into this concept that we can grow new brain cells. Because that means you can change your brain by growing new brain cells, right? Yes, so this is totally possible. And I will show you why. Your body uh, has uh, produces protein called BDNF or in other words, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This acts as a fertilizer to your brain. And what does fertilizer do? Fertilizer um, keeps the plant healthy. 
and for this case it keeps your neurons healthy plus it can help uh, with the growth of new brain cells that's right and how do we do that it's by subjecting your body to new experiences and uh, most importantly mild stress and mild stress um, stimulates the upregulation of BDNF and the logic here is pretty simple if you think about it let's say um, you, you had a problem and then you overcame it your brain is not the same as before you have solved the problem your brain needed to adapt to solve the problem or uh, if if you've been through stress like a breakup or loss of someone or we can do it the, with physical stress like sprinting and stuff like that but, uh, this triggers the production of BDNF and the, you know the saying that after a major event in your life that uh, that caused you stress and problems at the moment you always come out stronger and this is same with your brain but the idea is mild stress this means the stress must be manageable we are not in any way referring to chronic stress which will result to breaking down of the brain cells instead of growing new ones okay so i think we got enough uh, principles that we can create new solutions now okay the new solutions from the principle the main principle basically is that your brain is changeable you can change it in any how you want and you can grow new brain cells and in order to do that we only have one goal and that is to increase your BDNF and how do we do that well I have three um, concrete uh, examples for you number one is easy and exciting this is have new experiences may it be learning a new instrument traveling the world or trying out a new sport like for me i've never played volleyball in my whole life so trying it out will shock my brain and create new bdnf so that i can adapt to that sport and another thing is if you already have your craft then improve on it just like michael jordan um, he played and played basketball he kept on practicing and improving his skills so uh, his brain adapted to that and now he's a genius in his craft uh, for example in um, videography or making movies that's your craft just study about it uh, and expand your knowledge about it and you will create new brain cells for that and lastly this is uh, basically the most uh, instant or the fastest way to create BDNF um, th this is suitable for any busy individual and that is subject your body to mild stress and I've been doing this for the past months and I'm seeing results uh, I think so I feel smarter when I'm doing this and this is subjecting your body to mild stress and this includes heat high intensity interval training and the idea is we um, get the intensity of our workout to its highest level possible but the time is um, short as much as possible so that way we are uh, shocking our brain with stress but we are limiting the time of it because the idea is if if we give our brain this high level of stress it thinks like oh i need to create new brain cells so that i can do better the next time i'm subjected to this kind of stress but we are not breaking down our bodies or our brain cells by decreasing the volume of the exercise if it makes sense to you does that make sense and lastly a sprint that is an all-out sprint um, if you have an all-out sprint then you are subjecting your brain to another manageable stress let's say you sprint for 10 seconds and then recover and then sprint again that will greatly increase the BDNF in your brain and so that's the three concrete examples for you and the last one is adopt uh, Barney's what you call this attitude towards things like challenge yourself every single day I mean try to do new things every day like if you're brushing your teeth with your right hand you can switch to your left hand for today then and tomorrow and then uh, you can do random burpees or jump just surprise your brain every now and then and this will help you develop uh, resilience towards change you can cope up with changes very easily if you have this habit of surprising your brain and that's the main reason why i started this youtube channel because i want to challenge myself i'm not really comfortable talking to
to the camera talking to you like this um, and but I know that for each video that I put out there I'm sucking less and less until I become very uh, good at this that I will not stutter every single time so I hope this video was useful to you and challenge yourself every day so that you can feel smarter thanks for watching thanks for watching guys um, I have just one request from you please do hit the like button and subscribe if you are enjoying my videos because that is the only way that I know that you are enjoying my videos so that gives me inspired to create new videos for you so see you in the next video